What's up, everybody? Well, I got another unboxing video slash test of the same cooler I already have. Well, except for this is the best version of it. This one has a USB hub and RGB. And the reason I got this is not because the other one's bad or it broke or anything like that. It's just I take it to my friend's house. And it's kind of annoying to have to like reset the whole thing back up when I get home. I'd rather just have one where I can just keep it in my laptop backpack thing and then just keep the nice RGB one right here at home and just leave it sitting on the desk and then I can just plop my laptop back down when I get home and everything will be good. And I figured this way I can show you guys the better version of that cooler and it'll help you decide which one you guys want to go with as well. So why don't we open this box and see what we get. Well first let's take a quick look around here. I think that's an I, so I would say it's an IETS, apparently supercharged laptop cooling basin. I would definitely agree with that statement. Now let's just, without hitting the camera, show you what's on the back. And there we go, three port USB hub. And then we've got the lighting, that's kind of a, just a little idea of how it works. It's turbine. Oh, woke my computer up. Oh well. And now, let's get into that box. Alright, we've had a look around the box. Now why don't we get in to there and check out the cooler. Alright, much like the other one, you're greeted with the whole product just with all of its foam pads and it's protected in a small amount of foam. So now let's get this box out of here and see what we've got in this bag. All right, here's everything that came in the box. To be perfectly honest, I do not know what this would be for, but here it is. That would pretty much just block all of your airflow off. All right, it gets a certificate of approval. I'm pretty, I'm not the best spell in the world, but I'm pretty sure approval is spelled wrong. But who cares? As long as they've got cool products, I don't care how they spell anything. They could spell everything wrong as long as it cools my laptop. And hell, I might be the idiot. Maybe that is how you spell it. I'm not the best speller in the world. All right. It actually comes with a USB-C uh, USB cable to hook into your laptop. That's for the USB hub. And then it's got a plug. Now, this is actually a different plug than the one that I've got. Probably because this one needs to be a little bit better since it's got a little bit more stuff than just the fan itself. And then you've got your two foam pads. If you've got a small laptop, like a little 14 inch or 13 inch, then you'd probably want to leave this on. But if you've got a 15 plus, you're going to want to use this one. Plus, you might even have to cut it if you're going to do a 17 inch of them honest because mine gets to the raggedy edge where I kind of feel like cutting some of my foam a little bit and thinking maybe I could get a degree or two off but eh, not worth ruining the product if that's not the case then on the back you've got some 3m tape that I never even used on my other one I should probably do that now that I know for a fact that I've got it cut right and I'm using the correct one now let's get those out of the way now let us take a closer look at the cooling pad so if we bring this up real close to the camera it's pretty much got the instructions for it right there All right, that should be long enough to read. You can kind of get a look at the fan right there. And then you've got little spikes here to hold your laptop up and you've got different uh, levels. So depending on how big your laptop is. Now, if we turn it around this way, we've got the little RGB light bar right there. Then we've got the motor speed right there. You've got your RGB on and off switch there and probably different modes. See, I'm not sure what that one is. I'd have to read the instructions. Uh, things more and you got your power button here and that's where you'd put your DC power if we move around to the back or underside you've got your what you would call it uh, dust filter which you can remove and dust out then you've got I kind of messed up on these if I'm honest in my first video this is for setting your laptop up on a desk so if you wanted to, for example, let me get it set up real quick. There we go. That way you can have different now you can see how it would look. And then you could adjust these depending on how crazy of a, a level you want your laptop to be at. All the way up to the t pretty much top level, like that. That's pretty nuts. So, all right, let's put those back down now and take a look at the last side. And the last side, we've got your USB-C in, and you've got three USB, uh, I believe these are 3.0 ports out. I'd have to read the instruction manual again, but I'm pretty sure that's what those are. And now let's plug it in and get a uh, noise test. Okay, we've got it all plugged in. Now you guys can see the RGB. Let's see here. And then let's, we can go through the motor speed now. So if you have it completely to zero, it's not even on.
and it's completely maxed out. Alright, and then again if you have the thing all the way to the bottom, it's not spinning at all. I believe that's completely off. Yep. You can see it, it completely stops spinning in there. All right, now let's check out the RGB. All right, now we're gonna look at the RGB. So, so you can cycle it through things. So there's a different one. Man, that one's like the rave mode. And you got kind of like the fade in and out slowly. Man, this actually has a lot more functions than I was expecting. And I think that's how it was at the beginning again. So now let's get my laptop on there or let's get a baseline playing some Forza Horizon with no cooling pad, then we'll get this thing under there and see if I get even better temps than my old one. I'll kind of remember about what I used to get. Or heck, why don't we just test it? We'll throw that into the mix too. We'll do laptop, no cooling pad, my old cooling pad, and then this cooling pad. It shouldn't be any different because besides RGB and the USB hub, it should be the exact same thing, but just for fun, we can throw that in there. So why don't we go do that right now? All right, I found the RGB lighting instructions, so I'm just going to zoom in here and show you what they do real quick. You can read the directions real fast. I'm just going freehand, so it's honestly kind of hard to see how the text is going to be on this tiny little screen of my camera. Normally I have it hooked up to my phone, but not easy to hold all that. That should be good enough. If it's unrelegible, I apologize. All right, we're about to get started with the uh, tests here. First, we're going to run the game Forza Horizon 5. I'm going to just drive around. We'll do some screen capture, obviously, for like two minutes on screen capture just to have a good idea of some temps. And then we'll come in and see what kind of temps it got at the end. And we're going to do no cooling pad my old cooling pad and then with a new cooling pad just for fun we'll see how it does and then i figure we'll just go around the colossus with the same class cars it's not the most super scientific test but should be good as long as it's in the same class they'll all be about the same speed so without any more delay let us get started well we got the laptop off of the old cooling pad to start the tests just going to show you we don't have it hanging off of the edge to make it get better cooling or anything it's flat on the table so we will see what kind of temps it gets playing some four surprise and five now Alrighty, here's the settings we're going to be running at for this test just thought we'd go through them just once we're not going to go through every time and we're not doing any camera recorded gameplay here because gameplay isn't really the point here just going to do two minutes of each one, then finish up the race, and then check out the hardware info to see how hot it got. All right, let's get on with it. All right. Kind of forgot to hit record at the beginning of this race, which was the whole point. I just started racing. That's like, oh, wait. The whole point of this is for me to be doing a cooling test. So we're just going to cruise around and use this about the same kind of car class every time. All of them are going to be S1 cars, and they're all going to be about in the same number as each other. Performance index number. Oh, I need to shift. Ha! That guy kind of got reverse print maneuvered. It's one of my favorite things to do people that are trying to push into me. This game is so nice looking though. And as you can see, we are at 94 to 95 degrees on the CPU. We're at just touching 80, it seems, on the GPU so far. And obviously, we just started the race. We're only about two minutes in. We're not even two minutes, a minute in, but. hard to see the dang timer with my <laughs> uh, afterburner window up there. Hard to see progress or anything else either. But that's okay. This is mostly just for heating everything up and getting some thermals. And figure, heck, I might as well get some uh, money in the game at the same time and have a little fun racing around the whole Colossus each time. All right, probably should be moving on, shutting this off. All right, 
Here's our clock speeds here. Our max clocks here. Our averages over here. Now we'll move down to our CPU temps, current, minimum, maximum, average. And I literally popped this right out. I just Alt F forward and jumped right into doing this. So these should be pretty accurate. That took up 195. That should stay the same. Now let's scroll all the way back down to the 6800M. And current 63, minimum 54, maximum 82, and an average of 75. And then the hotspot 98, memory 86. So now let's get my old cooling pad back on here and see how that does. Okie dokie. This is with my old cooling pad now. Everything is exactly the same as it was before. And it looks like we got 75 FPS again. So dang, that's pretty consistent. But now, on to gameplay. Okay, now we're gonna start the next race here. Drop a Ferrari this time. We were McLaren the first. Now we're gonna do a Ferrari. And now we're with the old cooling pad. So we'll just play for like two minutes or so. We don't have to be exact. At least with the sport. And then I'll turn the recording off, complete the race, and then we'll check on the temps. Not gonna lie, the uh, McLaren pulled a lot harder than the second did. And now I'm sitting here trying to figure out if I want a GTR or a McLaren 12-C. Now everybody always tells me that like, McLarens just fall apart and they cost thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars just to keep the repairs going, but then other people say, oh no man, I've driven mine for like 30, 40,000 miles and just done basic maintenance. But I do have to guess that the GTR would probably still be a little more reliable. This is supposed to be like a dream car, kind of fun car, so I think it's okay to be a little ridiculous, but I just can't decide between those two cars. They both have their pros and cons. That McLaren is so sexy, though. I love the way the McLaren 12 c looks. But the GTR is so cool. It's got so much technology. It's all-wheel drive. Ah. But still got time to decide. All right, so now with my cooling pad, it seems like we're at 88 to 90. It seems to bounce around there. The GPU is at 74, so that seems to have dropped quite a few degrees again. Which is nice, that's the main reason I like this pad. But, all right, now I'll shut this off and we'll come back and let it tap us. All right, just got done running with my old cooling pad now. Check out the maximum clocks, and you guys can go back and compare it and the average here to the old to the other stuff. CPU minimum was 61. Current, it's going down really quick because of that fan. 91.9, so we got lower there. Average lower as well. We maxed out at about the same package power. Now let's go down to our 6800M, which current 58, minimum 51, maximum 76, and an average of 69. All right, now let's get my next cooling pad hooked up, shall we? All right, here's the benchmark with the new cooling pad. Everything's the same. Besides the resolution, this hertz keeps changing, but that doesn't matter. So. Got a little less stutter, but still 75 FPS. So man, this thing is a very consistent laptop. Three times in a row, it got 75 average. But all right, let's move on to that gameplay. Now we're gonna do a new cooling pad gameplay. Taking a Lamborghini Huracan Performante out. Some 
corners in this race. Go Lambo, go. Fun corner coming up right up here. Ooh, I did that much better in that car than any of the other two. I feel like this one's the most track focused out of all the cars I drove in this small little heat test. So I guess that it's got all wheel drive and all that, so I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. I still think the McLaren went fastest in the straight line, though. This one's got a lot of down makes sense. The other one's more got downforce, but it's more to meant to cut air through the air and get a higher top speed. And I'm not gonna lie, I thought I missed that checkpoint, but I think I got it, so alright, I'll take it. Alright, we've been playing for a, a mi at least a minute now, so attempts this time seem to be bounced between 84 and 85. And the GPU temps seem to be hovering around 70 to 69. So it seems like we've gotten even a little bit better temps, so that's pretty cool so far. Obviously, we'll have to wait and see what the end result is, but so far, that's already looking like a little improvement. Which makes me think I had the 4200 RPM version before. I thought I had the 5000 RPM version like this one is. But all right, I'll finish this up, and we'll see how hot it got. All right, just got done running with the new cooling pad. Take a quick look at all of these. Real fast. Definitely did a little bit better. Only went up to 88 this time. Now let's go look at the GPU. Oh yeah, much better. Maybe I had the 4200 RPM model all along. I thought I had the 5000 RPM model before. Maybe I was mistaken. And here's all the rest of these tests. These all look bet like less than the other one too. So that's cool. So not only do I get RGB and an, a USB hub, which I played the game with the Xbox controller hooked up to, and I have the headset that I'm doing this voiceover hooked up to it as well. And seems like the USB hub works great. Now I'm just gonna see if it does data real quick, which it should if it does those two things. And then I'm going to wrap this video up. Just wanted to show you guys what the RGB looked like in the dark. Seeing as I think the whole time I've been showing off the uh, cooling pad, I've had my lights on. So, haven't really been able to a good look. So now you can see there's my favorite one where it just kind of chases itself and makes different colors every so often. So I always thought that was pretty cool. But anyway, let's see if uh, USB drives and whatnot work. Alright, now let's plug a USB in here real quick. Yep, that works just fine. Came right up. So it does work for data as well. I figured it would if it was working for my uh, headset and my controller. Figured why wouldn't it work with that, but I figured let's make sure. So now why don't we just wrap this video up? Well, all right, that just about wraps this video up. I'm very impressed. This one actually did better, but that could just be because I had the 4200 RPM version before. That's, that's what I'm guessing. I, I don't think adding RGB and a USB hub is going to improve your temperatures, so that's got to be it. But hopefully now you guys have seen the differences between the two and you can decide which one is better for you. They both were about the same uh, loudness, to be honest with you, to my ears. So don't get the lower one if you're concerned with noise. They're both about as lo loud as one another. I really don't know why you would get the lower end one over this one, unless you wanted to save a little money. But I figure if you want the a good laptop like this, you might as well spend uh, as much as you have to to get a cooling pad that has all the stuff you want. And even if you don't want to use the RGB, you can turn that off and just use the USB hub, and that's still cool, in my opinion. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and until the next one, peace out, guys.